When I was nine, I developed a fear of the dark. When I say fear of the dark, I don't just mean thoughts of ominous creatures lurking in the shadows waiting to pounce on me. I was more so consumed by the thought of being lost forever in an endless black, walking endlessly with no bearings or light guiding your way until eventually collapsing from your own exhaustion. I didn't always have this fear, and this fear is unique in that being outside at night or even sleeping in my own bed doesn't bring about the dread-filled panic I've come to know. The first time I felt it, I was a little boy playing with some friends at a friend's house. We were running around, pretending to be superheroes, and fighting against the one of us unlucky enough to be the villain. While we were playing, the villain happened to sneak up on me and tag me, exclaiming, I got you. You're my prisoner now. To which I replied, You'll never get away with this. For a nine-year-old, my acting was fairly good. We stood side by side for a moment while the other heroes debated on how to rescue me. In the meantime, the villain told everyone that I was to be taken to the dungeon, to wait until the heroes were dealt with. The dungeon was the basement. It wasn't much of a dungeon, but that was what the villain decided. I was quickly ushered through the door to the steps, and then the villain slammed the door shut behind me. As soon as the door closed at my back, I froze. Rapidly, the light from the doorframe faded away, and I was left on a staircase in utter darkness. Now, I had seen my friend's basement before. We had spent multiple days playing down there and exploring. But this time was different. As the darkness enveloped me, I began to feel sweat dripping from my face. My breathing was becoming shallow. I wasn't sure what was wrong, but I knew I needed to get out of that place immediately. I quickly spun back around and tried to bang on the door. When my fist flew through the air, I felt my body lurch forward. The door that I had previously entered was no longer in front of me. I took a step, reaching out. Somehow there was still solid ground beneath my feet. I took another frantically waving my hands in every direction. My shallow breathing was slowly turning into hyperventilation as I shuffled faster and faster. Usually, a person's eyes adjust to the darkness, if only to the point of making out shapes. But mine didn't. I was completely shrouded, as if I had gone blind. At that point, I began to have a breakdown. Tears were streaming down my face, melding with the sweat from my brow. I called out for help, and my voice was carried for a moment before dying out. It's hard to put into words how terrifying that situation was for me. Maybe the only people who could relate would be minors, but even they could feel the walls which surrounded them. I continued forward, calling out once again, before suddenly I fell forward into a blinding white light. I was surrounded by all my friends looking at me with confused expressions each wondering why I was a mess of tears and panic. I told them nothing, only that I needed to leave now. My childhood friends and I slowly drifted apart, and I didn't have another episode like that until my senior year in high school. One of my classmates was throwing a seniors-only house party and I was invited. Normally, I didn't much care for stuff like that, but I promised the girl I had a crush on that I would go, so I did. I didn't arrive until later that evening. At that point, everyone was mostly drunk already. When I got there, my classmate greeted me with a drunken hello and demanded I go get a beer that I needed to catch up. At the risk of being berated by a house full of drunk teenagers, I nodded. He told me all the beer was in a fridge in his garage. I sighed and made my way through the door which connected to the garage itself. Opening the door, I could see the garage was quite dark, but I could distinctly see the fridge on the other wall. I took a few steps in and the weight of the door slammed itself shut. Thoughts of my nine-year-old self flooded back into my mind as everything vanished in front of me, as if a black hole had opened and all of reality was sucked in. Everything, except for me. 
I tried not to get worked up as I told myself I was just a kid back then and that I'm almost an adult now. I just needed to walk to the wall, find the fridge, grab a beer, and leave. Easy. So I walked. And walked. And walked. At some point, I knew I had walked much farther than the length of the garage. And that's when the feeling of panic slowly started to settle in again. I then remembered that I had my phone, and that I could just use the light from my phone to show my way. When I retrieved it from my pocket, I clicked the button, but nothing happened. The screen didn't glow, which was impossible because I knew I had charged my phone before coming to this party. My next reaction was to break out into a sprint. I ran as hard as my legs could take me. The echoes from my footfalls died out seconds after they sounded. It was like I was trapped in a dream. At one point, I thought it might be the case, so I slapped myself in the face and pinched my arms. Nothing seemed to wake me from this nightmare. Eventually, my sprint turned into a jog, which turned into walking. I could feel my strength leaving my body with each step. I shouted into the darkness for my friends, for anyone to help me. My breathing once again became shallow, though this time it was probably more from the fatigue than the fear. But trust me, the fear was still there. When I could no longer walk any further, I took a deep breath and I screamed as loud as I possibly could. Suddenly, a light bathed the entire room, blinding me for a moment. It seemed like the entire house had come to the garage to see what was wrong. When I could finally see again, I found myself standing face to face with a refrigerator. That's when the drunken laughter came in, followed by police sirens. Apparently, the drunk teenagers weren't the only ones to hear my scream. Some neighbor heard it too and called the cops. I was forever branded as the guy who got a party busted and got the host of that party in a lot of trouble. To say I was never invited out after that was an understatement. The last time this happened, I was at work. I work at a fairly busy call center during the day. Hell, all of my activities are during the day now. I never leave my bedroom after the sun goes down. I sleep until morning and over the years it has worked out pretty well for me. Anyways, it was just another average day at work. A storm had recently came in which made me nervous. I usually try to stay home during bad storms. But this one was only supposed to be a light rain which turned into a thunderous downpour. I finished my work for the day, shut down my computer and quickly made my way out of the office. In a poorly thought out decision combined with my desire to get home as quickly as possible, I stepped into the elevator. I pressed the lobby button and the door slowly closed. About halfway down, the power went out. When that light bulb extinguished itself, I felt a sudden jerk from the elevator stopping. I was once again brought back to those previous times. Sweat beaded on the sides of my face as I reached out to where the buttons once were. A part of me wished they were still there, but the whole of me knew they weren't anymore. I called out to the darkness in a timid whisper and stood my ground. Not because of bravery, mind you, but because I knew it would be fruitless to waste energy. I sat down and began waiting. I knew that eventually someone would get the power back on and the elevator would open once again. Just then, I heard something. It scared me to hear a noise in this place. It sounded like a man calling out in the distance. It was distorted and faint at first, but as time passed by, I could make out a man calling out for help. I stood up and shouted to the darkness, asking if he could hear me. I didn't expect a response, but the voice asked me where I was. I told him to keep talking and that I would come to him. I started walking towards his shouts. The closer I got, the more the voice sounded familiar to me. When I got to the voice, I still couldn't see anything in front of me. I asked him how he ended up here and for a moment there was no response. For a moment I thought the voice was just a figment of my own imagination. Then he spoke as if he was right next to me. It feels like I've been here for years. I... 
I don't remember how I got here. At that moment, I realized that the voice I was hearing was my own, albeit a bit older. Suddenly, the light washed over me and I was standing in the elevator drenched with sweat and staring at a bunch of confused office workers. I'm currently writing this from my car as I'm too terrified to go anywhere else. I'm not sure when it will happen again. But I do know one thing. It's going to happen again. And even though I'm terrified of the dark, I'm more scared of the fact that I might be in a place where no one will find me for a very long time.